All right, everyone. So we've had an opportunity to look at centering a ball of clay and also opening a ball of clay. So our next step is going to be to pull. Now, pulling is a different process and your hand position is gonna look quite different when you're pulling than it is when you're in any of these earlier processes. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about what that looks like, where your hands need to be, how to apply pressure appropriately, and how to begin to lift this wall and create a form that uh, is a little closer to our end desired result. So more of a bowl shape in this case. Now, before we actually start the process of pulling, um, let's review a little bit about what we need to do first. So first off, this is dead center. It's gotta be absolutely centered. So you do not wanna proceed past that very first stage of centering unless your piece is totally symmetrical. You've gotta have that ball symmetrical. Then you're gonna to wanna to move on to opening. You're gonna drive your thumb or bring your fingers in and pull and open that ball. Um, at the end of that stage, when you're done with the process of opening, if you were to cut your piece in half, it should look something like that. You should have a fairly thick wall, um, a little bit of extra material on the bottom because we're gonna leave that for trimming purposes later, um, but kind of a thick, fat little bowl is our intent at this point. So once you've got that ready to go, it's symmetrical, it's nice and even, and your wall thickness is pretty heavy like this, we're gonna begin the process of pulling. Now, when we pull, Again, our hand position is gonna change. So my right hand is actually gonna be sitting on the outside here of the bowl. So I'm gonna be out here to the right, and I'm gonna be applying pressure mostly with the side of my finger, with the side of my index finger. I'm gonna kinda of tuck that finger in. I like to hold a sponge in my right hand and my palm while I'm doing that, because if I start to feel my hand drag, or if I start to feel friction, I can just kinda of squeeze the sponge, and that'll give me a little bit more fluidity, so I can kinda of tuck in there and then keep moving. My left hand is gonna go inside of the bowl. So my left hand's gonna go inside here, my right hand is outside here. And I'm gonna be applying pressure between the sides of my two fingers. So I'll kind of tuck in, and I'm gonna work on pulling that up and out a little bit. Now, if you're pulling up a cylinder, just trying to do a straight cylinder, you're gonna end up actually having to apply a little more pressure with your right hand because of centrifugal force. And you wanna kind of focus on bringing it straight up towards your face. On the other hand, Today, we're gonna to be working on a bowl. So I'm gonna allow my hand to kind of move up and out. Now, I don't want to come out really steep. Um, if I come out too fast or too hard, um, then I'm gonna run into trouble because again, the centrifugal force that the wheel generates is gonna make that wall wanna fall. And so even if you want a piece that's fairly wide and flat, you wanna kinda of get your wall thickness established before you lay it out, um, just because you're gonna run into problems with it falling if you do that too early. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin a pull now. Uh, when I do my pull again, I'm gonna get the wall a little bit wet here. I'm again using a lot less water than I did from the first couple of stages when I was doing centering and opening. Um, but you still need enough that you don't feel friction. You shouldn't be dragging on the clay. So my left hand, my, my um, left hand's gonna be inside, my right hand's gonna be on the outside. My index finger's gonna go all the way down to the bat. I'm gonna kinda tuck in. Now when I do that, it's gonna create a little roll of clay. And I want my finger to stay below that little roll of clay. If I go too fast, if I move my hands too quickly and kind of cut through that, uh, I'm gonna spiral it and it's gonna become asymmetrical. What you've gotta do is you've gotta keep your pressure underneath that. So when you, when you tuck your finger in there, you kind of make a little indentation and you're gonna have a little roll of clay above your fingers and you wanna just gently work and pull that up as you go. So one of the things that, that I see people do is I see really busy hands. I see people moving their hands around a lot and doing this and this and this when they're first learning this process. And I really want you to pay attention to how slowly and deliberately my hands move relative to how quickly the bowl changes. So here we go, our first pull. As I get higher, I'm going to back off on my pressure. If I maintain the same pressure throughout the entire pull, I'm gonna end up with a wall that's very thick in the bottom and very, very thin on top. And we want an even consistency. Now the reason why it would be different in terms of thickness is because down at the bottom when you're doing a pull, you're trying to move all of this clay. You're moving everything, the entire bowl. When you're at the top, you're only moving everything above your fingers. So it requires a lot less force. So when you're doing a pull, rather than paying so much attention to how hard you're pushing and making that consistent, focus on how far apart your fingers are and keep that distance the same. Our goal is to end up with a wall thickness that's maybe about three eighths of an inch or so and is even and consistent from the top all the way to the bottom. If anything, I like to leave the lip just a little bit heavier. That way the, the, the bowl is more likely to stay symmetrical. It's less likely to warp 
in the kiln as well. Um, and I like to have a lip that's a little bit thicker just because it seems nice and it feels nice to, when you're handling the bowl as well. So again, I'm gonna tuck in. Make sure I get any of that extra leftover clay at the bottom. I don't wanna leave all that good clay down there. I wanna get a hold of that and I wanna pull it up. I'm gonna pinch in. I'm gonna to begin to pull. I'm squeezing my sponge. Just let a little extra water out. I'm beginning to let my shape kind of get closer to what I want in the end for a bowl. Okay, so right now my wall thickness is right about where I want it. And so I have completed the process of centering, opening, and basics when it comes to pulling. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the bowl. There's a couple of things I need to do. One is there's still a little bit of water left inside. So I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm gonna get that water out of there. As I do that, I'm also gonna gently compress with my sponge. That'll help to prevent the bowl from cracking in the bottom. Otherwise, all that tension uh, can lead to the bowl cracking and developing kind of an S-shaped crack in the bottom as it dries. So we wanna compress that, smooth that out, and that'll prevent the possibility of that cracking in the bottom, okay? Now, the other thing you might notice is that there's a lot of leftover clay down here around the base. And where the bowl comes down and meets, it kind of flares out and there's some extra material. Now I could just leave that and I could trim it out later, but I'm gonna take care of the majority of it right now to make my life a little easier when it comes time to trim. You may notice that the only tool I've used so far has been a sponge and my hands. So I'm gonna grab another tool right now. And so this is a modeling tool or specifically this is what I call a, a, a wood knife. And so this wood knife, I'm gonna to use to scrape away some of the extra clay around the base. So I'm gonna take the point in first and scrape away. Then I'm gonna flip it over and kind of blend it into the wall of the vessel. Move that. Okay. Scrape away, flip it over like so. Now, I have a, a piece here that is passable as a bowl, I, assume, I, I, would, I would say. It's, it's got a nice even thickness, it's fairly cleaned up, but the shape isn't really all that exciting. Um, so one of the next things that I'm gonna do is kind of begin to form and finish the vessel in terms of shape. So I'm gonna grab a wooden rib and I'm gonna take this rib and I'm gonna lay it inside the bowl and begin to kind of round and shape and form it. You'll notice that the shape of the bowl kind of deforms as I do this, and that's okay. You're gonna be kind of stretching the wall. But what I need to do is when I get it to where, I, where I'm happy with the curvature, I'm gonna kind of slowly back off on my pressure with the rib and let it come back to round, like so. I'm gonna smooth out my lip a little bit. You might have also noticed that my lip is a little bit higher on one side than the other. It's a little bit uneven. Sometimes when you're doing your pulls, you may end up with a little more clay on one side than the other. And so I'm gonna go ahead and show you a technique you can use to kind of fix that. So if the lip is just off by a little bit, we can actually remove a little bit of clay from the top of the bowl. Now, you don't wanna stab a pin tool into it and try to cut through it. You're not gonna be very effective with that process. What I do is I'm gonna get my hand wet, put my left hand on the inside and kind of support the rim. I'm gonna take a pin tool and then touch to the outside. I'm gonna let it kind of drag a little bit and draw a line all the way around the bowl. After I've kind of got it established there, my hands are nice and steady, I'm gonna gently begin to apply pressure and pull through until the needle tool touches my finger. When it's made one full revolution, I'll remove the extra clay. Again, take your time. There we go. From here I can take a sponge round, smooth out that lip. You want a nice, smooth, round, even lip. If you leave a sharp edge, the glaze will break on that edge uh, and it just, it won't look very nice. So you wanna make sure this is kind of rounded and even and nice and smooth. And there we go. Now, that's the basic bowl. Um, and if you did it correctly, and I really recommend when you're practicing and you're working through this process, um, that you've kind of you really check to make sure that you've accomplished all of these steps Don't try to keep something don't try to keep every little piece that you make until you really feel like you have these processes these steps down um, And so I, I, I strongly recommend and actually ask that all of my students Cut their first pieces in half and the reason that we do that Is because I want to be able to see 
that the thickness of the bolt is appropriate and that they left enough material in the bottom to trim, that we have a nice curvature here, that we have a wall thickness that's appropriate and even, that the lip isn't too thin. And so by cutting it in half, this allows us to really see if we've accomplished what we're trying to get to. And it'll allow us to become a better potter in the long term. Okay, so those are the basics. That's how you create the, the basic bowl on the potter's wheel. And those are the essential steps of working on the wheel with the most basic techniques, including centering, opening, and pulling. Good luck, have fun, make some pottery.